It's the story of a man living and dying on stolen land in pursuit of everything you said that I would never have. So motherfuck your wants. What's poppin' guys? My name is Duddis. This is Piff Rangers. I want to thank y'all for joining me on another episode. And for this week's content, we're doing a film review. And the film that I'm going to be reviewing is Prey. Prey is a 2022 action sci-fi thriller film and is the latest addition in the Predator franchise, a franchise that I have loved since I was a kid and I still hold dear to this day. Many people say that Prey is one of the best, if not the best, Predator movies. Are you serious? I would agree that it is one of the best Predator movies, but unfortunately, I believe that this film contains the worst Predator in it. If what you've told me is true, you will have gained my trust. And and we'll get into that. So, with that being said, let's get into this film review. Do it. The film starts with a single line of monologue. It says a long time ago, it is said that a monster came here. And I love that because in old native cultures, we always tell our stories and that's how we pass down our history. After some brief shots of the beautiful scenery, we get a shot of our main character, Naru, a Comanche woman with ambitions to be a hunter, getting kicked awake by who we can only assume is her brother. And then we see Naru kind of walk out into her village to start her day, and right off the bat, you gotta give props for the authenticity. I myself am not Comanche, I am Cree, but just from looking and from what I understand over the general, like, you know, native culture, it seems very authentic from, like, their hide clothing and the teepees it's all very authentic to a nomadic native tribe on the move to just kind of have teepees opposed to actual like cabins or huts a couple of small touches i really like in the opening scene where also what appears to be maybe a bear pelt or a deer pelt getting um dried out and also the uh, comanche woman you see in front of naru the uh, basket she has to hold the baby it was perfect one thing though, yet again, I'm not Comanche, so I don't know the reasoning behind this, but one thing that I don't understand throughout this movie is the face paint coloring. I'm not too sure what it means to the Comanche tribe myself, because me, from my understanding with my tribe and most native tribes, face paints such as black and red are typically only used during like war times. In the beginning of the film, we see Naru, a female who, you know, are not warriors typically, with black face face paint that she wears throughout the film and then later on we're introduced to her brother he's wearing red so like are you guys at war maybe maybe not maybe fuck yourself maybe they are currently at war with another tribe or maybe they have been having raids with the european settlers that they just don't really gloss over in this film which is actually kind of a missed opportunity in my opinion and we'll talk about that later next scene we see naru out with the comanche woman and they're out foraging collecting vegetables and maybe herbs and other things basically doing typical native woman shit typical native tribes this is what women do i mean that's that was typical native life women were the caregivers they took care of the home done some modest foraging such as that and the men were the hunters and the warriors if needed naru's kind of daydreaming while she's foraging stares at a tree and then decides fuck this shit fuck y'all leaves all the ladies to forage by themselves and then goes off and throws her tomahawk at a tree repeatedly and she's pretty damn good with it she accurately continuously hits the spot several times impressive as she's throwing her tomahawk she notices some deer tracks on the ground she then finds the deer and right when she's about to make her throw to kill it we hear what appears to be thunder and then the deer bolts causing her to miss her shot after a brief pursuit of the deer she winds up missing her next shot and losing the hunt but it also begs the question like if you're training to hunt or you really want to hunt why is your weapon a choice a tomahawk a tomahawk is a good weapon but if it comes down to hunting you'd be much better off with obviously a bow and arrow but next to that spear a bolas would have probably been more effective possibly Naru's dog, sorry, unfortunately gets its tail caught in a hunting trap, which also begs the question, how? Hunting traps were pressure activated. Like, how weak or sensitive is the pressure that a dog tail dragging or lightly brushing it set it off? And the fact it set it off and the dog barely yelped and was hardly in pain, like just sitting down calmly, is very interesting. Poor shit! Naru is in scene pulling out some orange leaves and she kind of crushes them up and rubs it on the dog's tail. She's kind of showing she already has a good knowledge of like herbs healing properties Clever girl. she then hears what we think is thunder yet again as she looks up to the sky we see a ship flying overhead but to her and her you know 
old school native tribal mind she she took it as like a omen a sign uh the thunderbird is what she believes she saw in the sky we then switch to a scene with naru and her brother tabe and they're kind of hunting down this hawk that's in the sky as he tells her a story about their father when um he first went on his first big hunt taking too long to take her shot tabe steals a kill from her effortlessly showing that he's a very experienced hunter and his skills are superior to his sister i am better naru then shares with her brother about the sign that she saw she's taking it that's a sign for her to take on her katamiya this is kind of ridiculous because comanche woman they just don't hunt even her brother is just kind of like are you sure you ready which is kind of weird because you'd kind of would expect him especially traditional native man just be like you getting enough sleep mate from this conversation that both of naru's hunts the attempted hunt on the deer and the practice with the bow on the hawk happened in the same day and she failed at both attempts i mean she couldn't shoot a bird and she missed the deer <laughs> fucking whoops we then see Naru with her mother and they're kind of prepping up dinner. In the same scene, we discover that the tomahawk was actually gifted to Naru by her late father. So now that explains the attachment and the significant why she can't let go of that shit. Hmm, maybe they could have used the tomahawk kind of as a send-off weapon, something she had to let go off of in order to kill the predator. That would have maybe been interesting, but... Nah. When her mother asks her, what's with this obsession about hunting? Naru replies, it's because you all think that I can't. Is that so? There might be some truth in what these folks are saying. I mean, you tried hunting half the day and came back with a fish that we didn't even see you hunt and we don't even know if you caught. Naru's brother then returns with the hawk that he shot down. Naru's mother sends her into the forest to go forge some more orange tootsia. Oh, goddamn fucking hippies. We then get a shot of the predator's ship taking off into space along with him cloaked and rising. It's about to begin. This is where the fun begins. Naru then returns and the tribe is in an uproar. One of the members have been attacked and is missing. He got taken by a mountain lion. So they all, a bunch of the men get ready and go off into the forest to look for him. Naru follows the men into the forest. One of them makes a joke about her presence saying that they won't be gone long enough to need a cook. Get the fuck out of here. Basically saying she has no place or no need to be here. Her brother defends her and saying that she's a very good tracker and that if they find Pui alive, that she has a very good knowledge of medicine that they would have need of. So she stays and he pulls her to the side and says, hey, don't fuck this up. And you know what, nigga? You act like a little bitch right now. You act real paranoid and shit. We then get a scene of an ant crawling on an invisible predator just standing in a forest. We then get a shot of a rattlesnake coming up, hunting a mouse, then it notices the predator, kind of lunges at it, but the predator is too quick and uses his wrist blade and kills the snake by driving its blade right through its body. We then see it skin the snake and then it pulls its skeleton from its body. This snake is dead as fuck. Well, no shit. This is where the fucking problems for the predator start. First of all, why is the fucking predator just standing on the forest floor doing nothing? If given the opportunity to be in a jungle-like environment, a predator will use the trees to avoid being tracked. So why the fuck is this one just standing on the ground? Oh, I don't know, just to make a cool scene real quick. And that's another thing, the scene isn't even that cool, because why the fuck is a predator even hunting a snake? That's not a worthy trophy. It makes zero sense for a predator, like if it were up in a tree to see a snake jump down and be like, oh yeah, this is what I'm going to tell everyone back home about what I did when I went to Earth. These creatures are all about pride, bragging rights, honor, and a little bit of compassion as well. And it just makes zero sense for one of the most dangerous creatures in the universe to wind up on the planet Earth, see a fucking snake, and be like, oh yeah, this is what I trained for. It smells like pussy to me. Okay, they find Pui and immediately Naru gets to making some healing bombs, some paste to seal up his wounds. And the other tribesmen quickly go to work making a makeshift stretcher. By the time it's nightfall, they're ready to move him. And then Naru gives him a bunch of orange tootsia, which is apparently can cool their blood. This clearly has to just be some film shit. I'm not even going to waste my time with a Google search because a flower that can cool your blood. Oh shit! I'm not going to go out here and say that Orange Tootsia has no healing or medicinal properties, but to cool down your body temperature to make it appear as though you were dead? Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. 
No, I don't think it could do that. Tabe decides want to stay on and hunt the big cat. Naru insists that there's something more going on than just the cat. Why did the cat leave Pui alive? Which is actually a great question. That's another thing that I like that happens throughout this film, whether it be with some of her combat or just knowledge of the land, herbs and politusses. Naru is shown as a fairly intelligent and a fairly capable being overall. So I like that she's always someone who has her wits about her and takes notes of things. Like, Clever girl. She's convinced that something scared the cat away that stopped it from finishing the job and she wants to be out here to help with her brother. Naru's brother just shrugs the whole thing off and basically tells her Pui needs you more so you stay with him and I'm gonna go handle this. I don't need any of you. While transporting Pui back home, Naru's dog notices a dead mouse that um, the snake from earlier had hunted. And Naru's checking it out and then further along she notices the dead snake's body. As she gets close to it, checks it out, the snake's body starts writhing around and dancing. Mind you, the predator killed this fucking snake earlier in the day. It is now pitch black nighttime. This thing has been dead for hours. It got stabbed with a fucking wrist blade and the wrist blade is a serious fucking weapon. If you watch Predator 2, when they are getting the um, metal examined, one character Danny died, the wrist blades fuck people up. Through a grown man, the wrist blades went right through the rib cage and nearly cleaved the heart in two with one swipe. And this went right through clean the body of a rattlesnake and then that thing was skinned and got its bones pulled out but somehow it's still what alive oh, oh, shit. she also notices um a predator print which she you know thinks could be a bear when the other tribesmen gather around they're just like no it's no worries let's keep moving she's like no why would a like what kind of animal skins a snake like this she was very concerned for her brother at this point after seeing this new possible predator in the field so so she takes off after her brother. As she storms off, another tribesman orders another warrior to go with her. Naru and the tribesman finally catch up to her brother and um, inform him of what they discovered. He says none of that matters right now because he's currently in the heart of the big cat's den and he focuses on hunting that. Naru suggests a plan that they leave some bait and wait for the cat to show up and then take the opportunity then. The tribesman who came along with her replies by saying a hunter doesn't wait, he hunts. Why don't you try being one of them silent monks? I, I mean, I think any hunter will tell you a lot of hunting involves a lot of just sitting around doing absolutely fucking nothing. So, I mean, I get it's late and you want to go home, but trust me, a hunter fucking waits. If you don't believe a hunter waits, watch the very first predator. That hunter waited a good amount of time to take out his first member from Dutch's team and then he waited every possible opportunity to take them out one by one. That was the best predator. Like that is the true nature of a predator. The systematic, methodical, chipping them down slowly. Cause that's what I do. I kill motherfuckers. Tabe ends the argument by saying that they're gonna do it Naru's way and that he plans on baiting the cat towards her. And he tells her, this is it. This is your big hunt. He tells her to tell that lion that when you see it, you tell it, this is it. While Naru's brother is off planning the trap for the lion, the tribesman begins talking a lot of shit to Naru, basically saying, oh, you're not ready for this, you're not tough, lions are big and scary. And while running his mouth, conveniently, the <laughs> lion pulls his ass down and fucking mauls him to death right in front of her. Yeah, fucking idiot. Naru is now all by herself with the lion. The thing scurries up the tree to face her down. She is scared shitless, starts backpedaling on the tree, trying to ward it off with her spear for God knows what reason. While with a fucking lion in front of her, she hears a roar in the distance and decides, let me look away and looks away at, you know, a distant forest where she can see some flashing red lights and some roaring and maybe some gunshots or whatever. Then when she turns around, the fucking lion leaps at her. While it knocks her off, she simultaneously like stabs it in the side, wounds it, right? But she goes flying off the tree and fucking hits her head off of a rock and knocked the fuck out and surprisingly not getting any brain damage. How about that? You'd either be a vegetable or you'd be dead. Is that so? A few hours later, Naru wakes up home in her teepee and her mom's there and she asks basically, you know, what the hell happened? Where's Tabe? She basically informs her that you got fucked up. Your brother dragged your ass back here and then he went back out to hunt the lion himself. You look at this big hunt thing the wrong way. You think you need to do the big hunt 
to prove that you can hunt. It's not about proving you can hunt. The big hunt is to prove you can survive. You're approaching this with the wrong mentality and that's why you already failed. I think that's like the knowledge that her mother's trying to like drill through her head. Clever girl. Tabe then returns with the dead mountain lion. He beheaded it and everything. And it appears that the war chief, the leader, whoever's in charge, seems to have molded him to be the next leader. Like they have this ceremony where he's holding his staff and he kind of passes it to Tabe. Tabe, and then there's a huge celebration where he's really proud of his mother but you see the guy who dissed Naru saying they wouldn't be needing a cook he's in the crowd and he looks really jealous he is not happy at all but who also is not happy is Naru who's in the crowd looking very pissed off and upset that her brother has basically been crowned top dog of the fucking clan if you really got a big problem with that why don't you go follow that hating ass motherfucker with all those red feathers in his head and go suck his hating ass dick if you're so mad that like why are you that mad that you fucked up like in the span of two days you went on three hunts and you fucked every single one of them up you have no one to be mad at but yourself ironic and tabe then goes over to naru kind of join with her and be happy in his new position and naru just starts snapping and was like oh yeah what about the snake what about who skinned it who what about the big tracks tabe's just like yo we'll handle that another day and she's like oh i'll go handle it myself and he tells her you can't and she's like oh do i need your permission he's like sister this isn't about permission i literally had to carry you back home tonight or you would have been dead well you tried but you just couldn't bring it home you think you could do these things but you just can't nemo that shit killed her next day starts at what naru gang kicked awake to start her day and go forage which kills me because typical native cultures women are considered to be sacred so it's just very funny that whether it be her mother her brother or other people in the community just kicking her every morning to wake her up is kind of funny another thing is just kicking her to wake her up is fucking crazy like the girl fell out of a tree hit her head on a rock should be concussed as a motherfucker right now like this girl should not be picking leaves or doing anything but resting for the next few days got up ready to forage but right at the last second side man fuck this shit went back into her teepee got her bow and arrow and her fucking tomahawk and decided i'm gonna try to go on another unsuccessful hunt and guess what she does she's off her fucking head nara then heads out to the area where she had seen like the lightning from the previous night when she was hunting the cat where she finds some tracks of the same animal from previously and she also unbeknownstly but you know some predator blood on the tree new by. so this is clearly a scene where like you know the predator got in a fight oh fucking nothing gets by you does it she then proceeds tracking the predator from here we then get a scene of a wolf hunting down a hare in the middle of the plane and the predator is watching this go down uh, i guess the predator got bored of being on the sidelines and being a cuck and decide he wants some of the action. So while the wolf is chased down the hare, the predator comes out of nowhere and just fucking tackles the wolf, knocking it off its fucking course, and now making its presence aware of the wolf. This wolf had no fucking idea the predator was there. It immediately, like, lunges at the predator, and this predator is so fucking slow and stupid, it fucking actually got bit by this wolf and had to throw it off of it. Like, this is some clear signs of two bad signs in a predator. One, it's a pussy. What happened? Did your, did your balls drop off? Because going after a fucking wolf that had no idea it was there, wasn't hunting it, and poses zero threat to the predator in any way, shape, or form, then you're fucking slow and stupid enough to let the wolf hit you. Why didn't it stab it in the fucking head like it did the snake earlier? If you're quick enough to stop a snake from biting you, and I'm pretty sure the less time to react to a snake than a wolf, how the fuck did you let the wolf bite you? Fuck yourself! We then get a standoff between the predator and the wolf, which is a complete waste of time, because we know the predator's gonna smoke it. Pulls out his blades, slices his gut, beheads it, claims it as a trophy, whatever. A cheap ripoff of the Predators film, when they had the Yakuza fighting off against the the scout predator in the field, and they were kind of having their sword fight. It's a cheap ripoff of that with a lot less dramatic stakes. But whatever, I mean, it got a cool skull, I guess. Easy peasy! Lemon squeezy. We then get a shot of Naru in the forest trying to hunt down some rabbits or hares by throwing her tomahawk at them repeatedly. Not a great plan. Mind you, she is doing this while she has a bow. I've gone to bat for this girl. She has shown she is very intelligent and capable. But when it comes to the hunting aspect, you really show some brain dead qualities when you are out there in the field. You dumb bitch. She decides to make a rope from a bunch of 
tree bark, ties it to her tomahawk, and then starts practicing with it by throwing it by tree by tree and kind of using the tomahawk like the way Scorpion would his blade in Mortal Kombat. Like, I mean, it's cool. The odds of anybody being able to successfully be catching that shit that well in your first time. That's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? For a girl who can't hunt a rabbit, a deer, or a, a cat, or a fucking hawk. This is all very impressive. Most impressive. Naru then finally shuts my mouth up and proves me and all the villagers wrong and finally scores like half a dozen rabbits. My nigga. Now the following day, Naru continues her hunt and we're seeing the predator clean up his trophy, the wolf that he just earned yesterday. This is a pretty cool little scene, especially the little device just disintegrating the flesh and the fur off the wolf's head. You fucking beauty. Naru then comes across a field that is just filled with skin buffalo. She also finds a cigar amongst. She gives it a whiff and decides just to leave it there because it must have been some bush. We then get a scene of the predator jumping around tree to tree and landing in a fucking river. For some reason in this film, the camouflage on the predator is now no longer negatively affected by water. In previous entries, it was made very clear that water negatively affected the uh, cloaking system and would render it ineffective. Even something as simple or modest as, yes, stepping your feet in it because in Predator 2, when um, the Predator was cornering King Louis and was approaching him about to kill him, it was stomping and walking through some water puddles. It caused its uh, cloaking vice to fail and reveal himself to King Louis right before he beheaded him. So that's just another like small detail I didn't like. Sucks, don't it? The Predator also notices the tracks of Sari, her footprints as well, and begins tracking them. The Predator becomes the prey, or the prey becomes the Predator, or whatever. Who gives a fuck? The movie progresses. Uh -huh. We then get a scene of Naru walking through the forest, and she falls into some sort of a sinkhole and begins to fall within it. But thanks to some quick thinking, luck, and skill, she uh, manages to take that tomahawk, and she begins throwing it toward a log ahead of her. The very last day attempt she manages to hook it on and drag herself out such good luck in nature and while this was happening the predator came across the buffalo massacre as he continues following naru after quickly cleaning herself off naru continues hunting and she comes across a bear but before she can properly prepare herself some wind blows and it catches her scent and starts to get nervous and tries to take a shot at it but unfortunately her fucking bowstring slips or breaks causing her to panic and the bear to notice her and begin to charge her she would have been fucking turned into a pail of cherry goo if it hadn't been for a trusty dog sorry distracting the bear and drawing it off long enough for her to quickly restring her bow and then she decided to jump down but only with one arrow uh, i guess it's the panic making her lose all logic you're dumb Sari ends up doubling back with the bear hot on its trail. Naru lets off her one shot and then realizes she's fucked and decides to take off. It starts swimming and takes shelter in a nearby beaver dam. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Bear is still on her ass and is like pouncing up and down on the beaver dam, trying to crack it open and get to her. But then the predator shows up. Boy, you are in for a show tonight, son. They start locking up, fucking pushing each other, throwing each other around. And at one point, the bear gets the predator down. It's like biting it, thrashing it around, and even like stands up, thinking, "Oh, maybe got the better of it." We then we see the predator stand up. The bear charges it again, and the predator proceeds to fucking one hit this bear, just one punch. I'm not too sure how, what exactly happened. If it broke its skull, neck, or jaw, but it fucked this creature up and put it out of commission in one hit. Just one. We then get an awesome shot of the predator literally bench pressing like a fucking bear above its fucking head as his blood drips all over it, revealing its form to Naru, causing her to just look on in horror. And then she flees back down into the river and takes off from the predator. Run, bitch! Run! After coming ashore and then wandering into the forest, she comes across a few of her tribe's people who were sent by her brother to look for her. She tells them that they can't just go home, that they have to go find her brother and help him, and that she believes that she saw a moopsie. Not too sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sorry. Her trust people tell her, nah, fuck that shit. We're going home. Basically tries to get, like, you know, rough with her and drag her home. And then they have a fight in which she shows that she's able to handle herself in a fist fight. She's clearly, you know, it's not her first rodeo. She holds her own. 
landing a few shots, biting his arm, you know, this girl's not above uh, fighting dirty if need be, which is, you know, good in a fight, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to win, especially if you're a female out here fighting against a man, so I kind of like that detail. She overpowers him, and then he tells her, okay, leave, and as she goes to leave, um, she gets whirled around, then he lands a cheap shot on her, stuns her, which is somewhat important, it'll be relevant to later, because, you know, he's a relatively skinny tribesman, but then they tie her up, and they basically, like, we're taking you home, and the predator is watching them and notices that uh, the men are armed with spears and bows and continues to follow the group. The one thing that was also funny about the little scuffle Naru had, the man that she fought had like a bear claw necklace, assuming that, you know, he probably hunted down, killed a bear. Damn, you took out a bear, but you can't even fight like, you know, a hundred pound girl. Get a load of this guy. While escorting Naru back to camp, one of the tribesmen sent a retriever needs to take a shit, so they all stop and take a quick break. And while they take this break, the main leader with the bear claw hears some disturbance in the trees and ends up killing a possum. Telling Naru, oh, relax, it's nothing, just a possum. And she's like, oh yeah, what do you think scared it out of its hole? Smart ass. Who is that fuck? What you think? As he goes to retrieve the possum and show the kill off to his fellow tribesmen, he then noticed the lasers getting pointed at him from the plasma caster. For some reason, the predator doesn't have a plasma caster. Instead, it launches three darts at him, hitting him in his abdomen and one right in his eye. That's pretty cool. The two tribesmen who are remaining watching Naru, like, look on in horror, and they're, like, watching the tree line, trying to see where the shots came from. Instead of, I don't know, using the trees and flanking the natives, being smart, taking it down the way a predator should this one walks right up to the dead body and just pulls the darts right out of him revealing his position to the natives and then getting himself shot like a jackass this would have never happened to a predator with a shred of intelligence like for example in predator 2 in the penthouse scene when that predator attacked the group of jamaicans he took them out one by one it was like batman arkham you know he would be there in the shadows take one out people would freak out he'd disappear hop down take another guy out with his net everyone freaks out shoots another stabs a guy with his spear and then takes out the final guy but this one it's just you know i'm gonna stand out here like, run through these people and absorb damage i'm not the jedi i should be we then get a quick fight scene where the predator engages the two tries and with his combi stick he actually uses it in a pretty sick way and a lot of predator fans enjoy is in the new additions to the film seeing some new weapons and some new creative ways to kill people and i like how they brought back the combi stick but they kind I had to be detached so it's kind of like a spear and a sword at the same time so that was a cool little thing they did but the problem is yet again with this fight scene the predator first it got it just stood there and got shot which is unbelievable just because like it was kind of being slow and careless it also even got stabbed with a spear in the foot but surely you can do better naru managed to get to her tomahawk cut herself from her bonds that she'd been previously tied in and run away where she meets with the guy who went away to go take a shit and they hide in a field at one point the tribesman thinks he has a shot but really the predator has the lasers on him and naru notices pulls him out of the way quickly and they start running through the field and then the predator starts chasing them and this thing is incredibly fast the predator catches up with the tribesman relatively quickly and like fucking obliterates him spraying his blood all over the field and then he continues chasing naru until she reaches the tree line she however steps into one of the bear traps and just like her dog she doesn't seem to be in in too too much pain for what appears to be a bear trap i've literally have made louder noises on the toilet than she has been getting caught in this trap which yet again will be kind of important later is that so the predator notices that she's caught in a trap and as we hear voices approaching decides just to leave her be and then we see some french hunters pull up and they decide just to take her cracking her right across the head with the butt of their gun and this is a girl who fell off a tree and landed on her back of her head on a rock just about two days ago so this girl should be severely not minorly concussed at this point and should definitely have some sort of brain damage but i mean that won't play into nothing girls get it done and this scene kind of begs into what i was just talking about about how this predator acts differently than the way a real predator should since this predator isn't really doing the methodical patiently taking people out cleverly and avoid any contact and harm to a minimal staying to the shadows and you know using the advantage kind of surprised that this predator didn't just kill the hunters who pulled up i mean it was only four of them what happened did your, did your balls drop off 
Huh? What the fuck? What, what was the big deal? They didn't see you or nothing. I mean, you could have dropped a couple of them, no problem. Uh, I don't know, but I guess the only reason he didn't do it was for the movie to continue on. Possibly. The next scene, Naru wakes up in the French trapper's camp. They're all like kind of like tormenting her. One of them who can speak the language tries to enlist her help to catch the predator. And then we find out that they've also captured her brother. And then the trappers to kind of taunt her, antagonize her, pull him out of his cage and then cut him across his chest. This is a straight shot out to Predator 1. When Billy, when he was facing down the Predator and he took out his blade and he cut himself across the chest, this is just straight homage. I kind of like that. But Billy did it himself. Because I'm not a fucking pussy. They didn't even get a shot in this big open field and it looks like some shit out of no man's land from World War One. I'm assuming the French trappers have burned out this area as a trapping spot for the Predator. I guess they've learned that it uses the trees, but I mean, shit, we haven't really seen it use the trees. It would have been nice to see seen that on screen but i guess they saved the good bits for you know not in the film get fucked naru and tabe are tied up in the center of this field and the french trappers are surrounding them all across watching waiting for the predator to come a group of french trappers are watching above a hill and the predator sneaks up on them kills a few of them who are on horseback unbeknownst to two of them who are laying down watching which shows that this predator has the ability to go up to a group of people and take out over half of them without people even knowing what's going on, being seen or noticed. So it really begs the question why it was standing around like a jackass, letting itself get shot by an arrow and stabbed by a fucking spear. I'm not the Jedi, I should be. With the Predator approaching, Naru informs her brother that it doesn't just accept bait. It wants, you know, the thrill of a hunt, a challenge. Tabe then tells Naru the real reason he was able to kill the lion was because of her plan with the tree and the fact that she wounded it, he was able to finish it off. Oh, that's a real nice touch, bro. Too bad you didn't tell the whole fucking tribe that. Maybe your sister would have gotten a little respect from them, but uh, hey, thanks for telling us all that right before you're about to die, maybe. Why don't you try being one of them silent monks? Naru says, I don't know if this creature can even be killed. Her brother responds with, if it bleeds, we can kill it, which yet again is a direct callback to Predator 1, a line that was delivered after the team discovered that a patch of the Predator's blood had been discovered after they had done the massive shootout in the forest. This line kind of has no merit opposed to in Predator 1 because we don't even know if Tabe has seen this creature, has any encounters with it at this time. He definitely hasn't seen it bleed, so... What the fuck? The Predator then steps in a trap, but unlike Naru and Sari, this fucking creature roars in pain. But this is the exact same type of traps that they used on the dog and the, I don't know, 190 pound Comanche woman. How the fuck did they no sell the pain of these traps, but it seems excruciating when it's on like a 400, 500 pound alien? He's fucking right. The French trappers then reveal themselves, tripping the predator, causing it to fall an additional trap, and they throw a net over it, celebrating, thinking they have the creature captured. But it's short lived because the predator then uses his wrist blades to stab one of them through the head, rises up, throws their th fucking net around, causing most of them to fall, and kills another successfully. This is a cool scene, but a scene like this justifies that the plasma caster could have been in this film. The plasma caster is synonymous with the predator. Taking the plasma caster off of the predator is like taking the cape off of batman it just doesn't look right and it doesn't make sense and it's not the fucking same thing give me what i want so in perfect shot for him just uses plasma caster to take the fucking head off of one of these guys or two of them and then breaking out of the fucking net and finishing the rest of them off maybe even just like you know may shooting three or four of the half a dozen guys who's trapped him initially just to quickly go on a quick rage clear the field and collect himself he still has some pretty good kills the fucking that net trap that he uses was fucking mint that was a top kill in this movie like in predator 2 when they first introduced the predator gun i loved it it was sick when they brought it back an avp and holy shit was it better than ever in this movie flawless another highlight from this fight is we get introduced to a new predator weapon or a defensive weapon which we don't always see all the time from the predator which is a shield which apparently they got inspired from god of war and i gotta say this shit was pretty sick and i was a huge fan of it and 
and this is a type of weapon that I would love to see in the Predator universe because a very useful weapon, especially for a Predator coming on Earth, like having a fucking bulletproof shield that can protect most of your torso is very useful for a Predator because most Predators typically wear very light armor. The most heavily armored Predators we ever saw were an AVP, but those things were going against Xenomorph, so it would make sense to put more armor on your body when you're fighting fucking creatures with acid blood. I really enjoyed the uh, Predator shield. This shit was a great addition to this film, and I hope we see it again in the next Predator film and in other installments. Woo! I like this! The Predator continues to mow through these French trappers with relative ease, just taking them out in spectacular fashion. The French trappers continue to pepper the Predator with gunfire as Naru and her brother work on escaping. Naru tells a story about Beaver that she watched chew its own leg off as she frees her brother and herself from their bonds. Clever girl. The Predator then uses the trees to advance toward the French gun line. As he does so, he drops his wrist gauntlet and I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck is it really using as human? huge ass bomb on these guys already it seems a little excessive because usually the predator only uses this wrist gauntlet when it thinks it's about to lose when it thinks it's about to die as it beeps the main french antagonist runs away but the other frenchmen gather close and then three little discs start flying above the wrist gauntlet and they're kind of like mines and as they beat more rapidly the frenchmen try to run but then the mines like kind of divide in their paths have like it's a cluster grenade i won't even lie it was a pretty cool weapon and I, I really liked it, but if this is supposed to be a replacement for the actual bomb that is within the Predator Gauntlet, this is complete bullshit. It's all bullshit! All of it! With their newfound freedom, Tabe goes after some horses for him and his sister, while Naru takes off back towards the French encampment to get her dog. Once she arrives at the encampment, the French trappers that are remaining are packing up the ship. One of them is about to kill Sari, and thankfully, Naru stops right on time and engages the French trappers that are remaining at the camp. I gotta say, the fight scene, like the choreography and shit, is pretty fucking good. Like, it's well fought, like, you know, she's very quick and about her wits. I also like how a couple of the moves she did in order to, like, kind of gain the advantage or to utilize her strength better, she would use, like, her leg muscles against the men's, like, arms and shit to redirect their attacks. A smaller girl against weaker opponent. We all know that the leg muscles are typically bigger than that that are in your arm, so it would be a lot easier to fend off a larger opponent by kicking them off you with your leg opposed to pushing them off. So there are a few small details in this fight i did like but at the same time i do remember couldn't even take out a deer but five guys no problem Bullshit. both naru and the predator take a break to like tend to their wounds as she's tending to hers one of the french traders the one who tried to speak with her comes to the camp points a gun at her but then asks her for his help because he's severely injured he lost a leg in the battle he offers her a trade they says you help me give me some medicine and i'll show you how to use my flintlock pistol is it possible to learn this power while tending to the wound trapper Naru removes one of the predator's weapons but hangs on to it he then finishes off explaining to her how to use the flintlock and then she feeds him a bunch of orange tootsia causing him to start shaking and being freezing cold after hearing a disturbance in the trees Naru flees to hide as the frenchman plays dead and the predator enters the camp we get to see from his perspective and we can see that the orange tootsia has rendered the wounded trapper to appear as though he's dead. His body temperature is the same as the dead Frenchman that Naru has killed earlier. I gotta call fuckery on that one. I don't think so. Naru's watching and she notices this and she makes the connection. Clever girl. The predator steps on the wounded Frenchman's body, causing him to move and scream. And the predator, you know, we see from his vision that he can notice that even though there's no heat coming from it, that the body's moving. And then he stabs it, killing the wounded Frenchman. You gotta be quiet. Then at that moment, Sari starts getting all panicked. The predator notices and pulls out its fucking dart gun. And right as it's about to shoot the dog, and yet again, this begs the question, why the fuck is a predator shooting a dog? Yeah, pussy! <laughs> Right before the predator is able to shoot the dog though, Tabe arrives on his horse and he hits the predator across the head, forcing the helmet right off of its head and causing it to miss. Because what we discover is that the dart gun, the darts fired from it, they will, they're guided by the laser. If you lock the laser on something, but you turn the gun in a completely different direction and shoot at it, the dart will fly around 
and make its way to the target regardless. Is this kind of useful? Maybe, but it also has its disadvantages at the same time. Then we finally got our first face shot of the Predator. I gotta say, it looks pretty goddamn good. It's a little bit different from the traditional Predator look, but you know, it's still got all the familiar characteristics and it looks pretty fucking dope. You're a beautiful motherfucker. Naru takes cover behind a tree and begins loading the flintlock pistol. And we see the Predator continue to shoot its dart gun at Tabe, but the Predator is supposed to be the best hunter in the universe, and you would assume that the, one of the best hunters in the universe is, knows the uses of its own weaponry. These blow dart things are laser targeted. It's no longer wearing its helmet, and the laser's just pointed off randomly at nothing. He still tries to shoot Tabe, knowing that the darts are going to be guided away from him and drift to wherever the fuck his laser's pointing. So just like, dude, why, why the fuck are you wasting your time you could use your spear you could pull out one of those razor disc things that you use to maim the frenchman and take off his leg or i don't know maybe the net gun fuck like literally almost anything would have been better than just standing there shooting a gun you know the projectiles aren't even going to meet the mark you fool the predator then retrieves his helmet and as tabe manages to get his hands on a bow and begins firing at him he activates his shield to protect himself and while he's focusing on tabe naru comes up with loaded flintlock pistol pointing it at him tries to fire but doesn't and then she proceeds to shout at him hey causing the predator to turn and look you need to tell me that this creature with all this tracking device thermal gear and probably audio didn't notice the girl standing maybe 12 feet to the right of it this is the same thing where about maybe 10 15 minutes earlier we saw it like whirl around and do a very long peripheral shot which took out the french wounded trapper and he was fucking 30 feet away maybe even more but he saw that guy all the way in the corner of his eye but you don't see naru nigga did you know that i can see you while naru distracted the predator tabe rides up and throws uh, the predator's spear through its shoulder then he lands and he begins firing a couple shots on it, and he's uh engaged in a quick confrontation with the predator where he actually holds his own out of frustration of dealing with tabe in the middle of its fight with him it goes invisible and disappears which is smart, but also begs a question, why the fuck didn't Predator do something like that when it was uh, fighting the natives earlier, dash into the trees and sneak around instead of just standing there like a jackass? Like, later on in the film, it's proven that he will cloak out and reestablish himself if he's slightly overwhelmed. But, you know, whatever. It's what it is. A moment or two after the Predator's brief disappearance, Tabe has the feeling that it snuck up on him. The Predator has him right where he wants him. He looks at his sister and says that this is this, as far as he goes, and tells her to bring it home. The Predator drives his wrist blade right through Tabe's back and through his chest, lifting him up in the air, and Naru just watches in horror, holding the pistol toward the creature, but unable to do anything, just frozen in fear as her brother's dying in front of her. The predator drops her brother down, uncloaks himself, and begins to approach her as if to finish her off but Tabe still has some life in him and grabs the wolf skull trophy from earlier off of the predator's hip and drives its teeth into its leg causing the predator to whirl around take out its spear and finish Tabe off and during that moment Naru fled run bitch run the next scene we see Naru sobbing by a lake as she washes herself up we also get a shot back at the village where a couple of warriors return and they're basically informing um, Naru's mother of Tabe's passing we believe shot of simultaneous grief grief between uh, Naru and her mother. Oh, As night approaches, Naru notices across the river the last remaining French trader, the leader, the one who just so happened to gun butt the shit out of her earlier. She decides to run upon him and return the favor by knocking him the fuck out and taking him prisoner. <laughs> And the French trader awakes, and he's been taken to a place of Naru's choosing, only to discover that his leg has been hacked off. As the French trader is panicking, Naru explains to him that you bled my brother, so now it's time for you to bleed. Holy, get what you fucking deserve! She also tells him, you don't think I'm a hunter, and neither does the creature, as she eats the last of her orange tootsia. She also states that the fact that people like the French traders and that the predator don't consider her a threat is what makes her the most most dangerous. Only in your mind. As we hear the predator approaching the lure, Naru decides to whistle, and this is another great touch. Natives, we do we do not whistle in the woods. Never whistle in the woods, especially if you're alone, because we believe that whistling in the woods beckons um, evil spirits. So yeah, if you're ever with some native friends out hiking or camping, and you start whistling your favorite tune, and they tell you to shut the fuck up. 
That would be why. I don't wanna hear that bullshit! Predator approaches the Frenchman to finish him off. Because Nara was actually in the path of the Predator, but she just slightly moves her foot, just so that way she won't brush into it. Predator just moves past her and executes the Frenchman by just slicing his head off with his spear. I guess it's a good thing for Naru that this Predator doesn't have any audio capability within his helmet or he would have surely have heard her fucking heartbeat as he walked past her. But anyway, after he finishes off the French Trapper, Naru raises the flintlock pistol and fires. It goes off and it goes right through the Predator's fucking head and knocks its helmet right off its face. While the Predator is dazed and wounded, Naru snatches up his helmet and then runs off to a, a slightly different location and i'm not too sure how much time has passed but it must have been fucking at least an hour or two because in this time span not only has naru switched locations to a new fighting area she created an entire trap in this time frame you see her shaving down pieces of sticks and then tying them around a tree to make a trap for the predator and then you see her also setting the helmet down in between some rocks how, how much fucking time of a break does this predator take that's kind of fucked up it's fucking right and if you wounded and fucked up this predator or half knocked out this predator to the point where it took a couple hour break before it came back and tried to go for round two begs the question why naru didn't just fucking finish it off right then and there but yeah i guess the movie had to continue on with the plot and here we go as the predator enters the hunting ground naru is perched on a tree watching and when it gets into a good position she runs off the branch landing on its back attacking it striking it a few times with her tomahawk and yet again this kind of bit like adds on to the whole fact this is a shitty ass predator this dude has no sense of his awarenesses like naru was running on a tree branch so you would have heard that shit behind you she even grunted and shouted when she leapt down so yet again she's going Ugh! she's like leaping off a branch she didn't hear that didn't even turn around and react until she actually landed on him and started hacking at him with the fucking tomahawk so it's just like really nigga surely you can do better the predator finally throws this girl off of his shoulders and like you know it stuns her momentarily and instead of i don't know fucking killing her immediately like you would think at this point the predator has right taken her lightly but took a bullet to the back of the fucking head you would think he wouldn't be fucking around with her but no it takes his fucking sweet ass time to pull out spear and throw it at her but just in time before it made the throw sorry runs up and fucking jumps on on the predator's back causing him to miss his spear throw baby come on how you gonna do this shit right now taking advantage of the distraction caused by sorry naru takes off with the predator closely after her the trap that she set up even though it's complete bullshit that she set it up in time is extremely intelligent and effective all these sharpened sticks wrapped around the tree she basically runs along the forest drawing it along those tree lines hoping it would jump on it and it did and it like cut open its side it fucked it up it hurt it Clever girl. predators are supposed to be very smart and adapt to the people they fight with usually if you pull one trick on them they aren't going to fall for that shit twice so this predator just got a good injury off of the fucking jumping from the tree to tree shit you'd think now it would be on foot especially because it's just a fucking human you can fucking chase it down no fucking problem bro um it continues to use the tree line and dives at naru planting its wrist blade deep into a tree getting it like stuck and she drew it to where he threw the fucking spear so she picks up the spear while the wrist blade is planted in the tree and then she attempts to jab the predator the fucking predator activates its um, bulletproof shield and i don't know if it's from his strength if it's from his strength he's a fucking retard and if it's from naru's strength it's extremely questionable because how are you out muscling a predator and forcing its shield toward itself causing it to cut its arm off this is a hundred pound maybe less girl we saw this predator one punch a fucking grizzly bear and you're gonna tell me you're shoving it around and bossing it around in a fucking hand-to-hand -hand fist fight nah like and then if it's just the predator swinging the fucking shield toward himself he's a fucking idiot no matter which way you chop it up this whole arm chopping off scene is just fucking stupid well that's just silly silly yes idiotic yes realizing that he's caught off his own arm the predator like growls and is visibly like pissed off so he's like feeling stupid and then he turns toward naru naru is holding the spear still and moves to jab toward him and the predator somehow deactivates the spear and retracts it like dude if you could have done that shit why didn't you just retract it into the harmless club when she was trying to stab you with it and then you fucking cut your own arm off <laughs> Fucking whoops. The fuckery continues, because after this, the predator then starts swinging his shielded arm at Naru. The first one was at her face, and that one 
looks like it missed. The second strike, however, makes contact with her arm and Naru reacts, falls to the ground, screams in pain. But what's funny is she shows no damage at all. There's no blood on her arm, no cut. And then at the end of the film, you see no cut on her when the sun's rising. So you mean to tell me I just watched a predator cut off its own arm with this fucking shield. And earlier I saw it cut a tree in half with this fucking shield. But this strong animal that one punched a fucking grizzly bear while holding this shield just swiped at your arm but it's still somehow attached to your body right arnold got one backhand from this thing and got knocked maybe 10 to 12 feet across the jungle floor danny glover because him like naru and arnold schwarzenegger are some of the only people to take out predator solo but the difference between naru and danny glover and arnold schwarzenegger is danny glover and arnold schwarzenegger's characters both got cut up were bleeding and had visible damage on them after having an encounter with a fucking alien because that's more believable what is not believable is an inexperienced hunter having a confrontation with a fucking universal alien hunter with advanced technology and besting it in a flawless victory mortal combat combat style get fucked this thing grabs fucking naru by its her throat swings her over its head and choke slams her right to the fucking forest floor and she's fine poor shit it has her by her throat this animal has the ability to render a grizzly bear useless with one punch you have your fucking hand around her throat fun fact guys do you know it takes around 40 pounds of pressure give or take to crush a human being's windpipe why the fuck didn't he just squeeze and kill her just do it you already got shot in the back of your fucking head and you lost your arm. Why are you playing around with this bitch any more than you already have? Just do it! Naru then wedges her head between a couple of stones right as the predator is about to activate his shield to decapitate her. And we see the fucking shield cutting through solid rock. This shield hit her arm and her arm ain't bleeding and it has no cut. But we're right now watching it cut through stone. But when he swung it with all his strength at her arm, it didn't even fucking cut her. Oh, bullshit. Naru then shows again that she's a bit of a dirty and dishonorable fighter if she has to be to get the advantage because as the predators try to decapitate her head through the rock she reaches up grabs one of his face mandibles breaks it off and then stabs him like in the face or in the neck area with it oh shit naru and the predator having their final standoff and as that's happening we see sorry behind the predator and it's holding naru's tomahawk in its mouth she then calls him and they run towards each other and as she does she kind of like uh slide cancels between his legs and like catches the tomahawk stabs him in the leg uses the rope of the tomahawk wrapping around like the predator wrapped it all around his body and then kind of leapt off of him and pulled him and tugged him and he fell into what we now know is the mud pit area that naru herself got stuck in so here's another thing you gotta give naru props even though it's very unbelievable that she had all that time to get to the location and do all this setup she chose a great place to fight because getting it to a spot where she can restrict its movements that's a pretty smart plan i'm smarter than a beaver the predator begins to rise out the mud and she starts saying come on do it do it do it yet again doing a call back to the original predator much better film and the predator pulls out its dart gun and begins aiming at her as the predator activates its gun and prepares to fire naru says this is as far as you go this is it no more this is it as he's about to fire, we notice that the Predator's laser from his helmet is actually pointing right at his head unbeknownst to him. So he let loose a shot and it obviously fucking misses and it starts whizzing around the forest and he's like watching it go round and round. His eyes land on the helmet and he takes it in that it's pointed right at him. He gives one last roar in surprise as the dart flies through his fucking head, effectively killing him. But also begs a question, why the fuck didn't the bullet to the back of his head kill him? Why wasn't the bullet enough i mean that shit clearly went through and through if it knocked his helmet off but i mean fuck whatever it's all bullshit all of it this is the, the cherry on the cake 
of how this whole setup thing is bullshit. Really? Naru put the fucking helmet in the perfect position. How could you possibly have known he was going to be standing in that exact spot? It's a fucking mosh or bog pit. Is it only fucking wide enough for one person to stand in? Ugh, it was just way too convenient. It would have been cooler if after he fell, we see her grab the helmet and then place it and aim it towards him. But no. Fuck. With the universe's stupidest predator dead, Naru gives off a defiant war kai, cementing her victory over this dumb fucking alien. Good job. As the sun rises, we see Naru returning to the village, covered in the blood of her kill, along with her trophies, the flintlock pistol, and the head of the predator. She throws the head of the predator at the ground at the war chief's feet, and then tosses him the pistol, at saying that there's danger nearby, and they need to get ready to move immediately. We also get a nice easter egg for Predator 2, when uh, we realize that the flintlock pistol is the same flintlock pistol that a Predator Elder gave Danny Glover's a character in Predator 2 after he defeated the uh, city predator in single combat this i guess implies one of two things that these predators came back to the village and they were so impressed with naru and their people that they did some sort of exchange of gifts or the predators came back to the village and fucking annihilated naru and her people and took the pistol possibly the film then ends with the Comanche people conducting another ceremony, the exact same one that they did for Tabe when he was kind of being molded to be the next war chief. Naru's fulfilling the shoes of her brother. She proved it to her tribe and not only to herself that she can do this shit and survive. And the film ends. It's done. And that's Prey. And I gotta say, it's a good film. The actors who played Naru and Tabe did a great job. Costume department, the props, uh, the Predator itself itself also looked great didn't mind the predator's helmet either it was pretty dope but even though it kind of clashes with a lot of other predators they literally got some eye lenses this one didn't have none but i mean the predator design was very cool and a couple of the weapons were dope like i really love the shield and i thought it was cool what they did with the combi stick how they made it split apart the cgi in the film was also pretty good and wasn't nothing like too over the top the action was also pretty good in this shit the film's also directed quite well like it looks great it's shot well edited great Great. even like su subtle things like the score like in the beginning of the film where it kind of has like Nara like opening up her day and showing like the plane and all that I love the music it honestly kind of remind me a little bit of Last of the Mohicans and if you happen to be watching this and you've never seen Last of the Mohicans go watch that shit after this that is a five out of five that movie is a fucking banger it's beautiful Despite all the good and the enjoyment I did find in this film, I also found a lot of problems with it. And I guess my main problems are brought up to a bunch of stupid stuff, missed opportunities, and the predator. Tell us now! Whether it be Naru, her brother, or other tribes members, we see several of these tribes members with black and red face paint. Are they in tribal war, or are they warring with the fur traders? Like, this could have easily been explained with one line of dialogue. The second issue gets brought up with the predator and he'll be the center of a lot of issues and the first issue brought up with him is how the director the studio decided to utilize the predator's screen presence and screen time the things it chose to hunt the first two interactions we get with the predator are completely wasteful and not that true to the nature of a predator i have no issue with the predator hunting down the bear the wolf and the snake do not a bear scene clocking in at nearly 45 minutes that's about half the film's runtime. So in my opinion, and for maybe some other fans' opinions, like the hunt didn't really even begin until almost halfway through the film. It would have been better used if we maybe just got some perspective of the predator observing and stalking potential prey. And we're going to get into that right now. And here we go. Go. I don't like how they wasted the early scenes with the Predator and you may be wondering to yourself well if they didn't have those scenes what would they have used or done instead well how about this how we dial it back all the way to the beginning how about they do what I said and maybe with a couple lines of dialogue they explain that they have active problems with the European fur traders and that they've had raids and battles with them recently and it's like a dangerous setting for them right now instead of a fucking mountain lion have 
Pui get captured by a hunting party of these guys and they're taking Pui back to camp and we got to get him back. The predator will be sitting there watching and observing, maybe watching the French huntsman because it would have made more sense if the predator has been hunting the French huntsman and leaving the natives alone. It would be cool if maybe you showed an observation shot of the predator watching the native tribes but scanning them and realizing these folks just got stick and stone technology these guys aren't worthy they don't just kill anybody they show mercy several times like in um predator 2 one of the detectives who was trying to kill the predator in the subway it was about to get slaughtered by her but it spared her because it detected a second heartbeat within her and even though she was armed and she's skilled and you know she's essentially a fucking like warrior from our planet it still spared her regardless because it has compassion just like in avp when Waylon was attempting to attack a predator and sacrifice himself the predator first spared him because quickly scanned him maybe to see if he had had like xenomorph inside of him but instead he's seen that he is fucking terminally ill i'm not gonna waste my time with you and just release him and try to walk away until he pulled out the flamethrower and then the predator finished him off i don't believe a real predator would see folks with stick and stone technology that is not aware of his presence and be like yeah let me let me get these guys i think if he saw traders with muskets blowing away 800 pound buffalo with one shot he'd be like okay these guys are worth my time these guys got some formidable weaponry that i want to test myself against like not a fucking bow and arrow what kind of shit is that i don't do this kind of look the film could have easily sent it all around the native people i love that but the fucking predator should have not have seen a few of them with some sticks and stone weaponry and been like let me get these guys especially when he was actively already hunting the french traders he knows that there's better competition out there we could have seen the natives laid out an ambush like take out their little caravan bring back who we kill like you know half a dozen of the settlers send a few of them running free their man bring them back home predator could have been watching all this the reason why the predators always come to earth isn't because we're fucking one of the deadliest things on the planet it's because of our brains some of us are highly intelligent and some of us are highly adaptable and that is what they see a challenge in us for finally a worthy opponent so yeah if they changed a few scenes they would have put the predator in a better position he would have been acting more like a predator because just gorging on the people with stick and stones just come off like a straight bitch in my opinion Fucking pussy man, he's laughing at you. The running theme in this movie, almost every action scene, whether it be good, bad, just okay, has problems. I think that the dart gun only worked out for him one time on the very first guy he used. I, 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 I think every other time we see our predator friend use this dart gun, he fucking misses, or like in the very end. He kills himself. Are you fucking retarded? What the hell's the matter with you? The tracking is very useful for that gun. It's very valuable. But the fact that what? You can't turn it off? You mean tell me this man can't turn off the auto tracking, but he can like without hitting a button or anything can deactivate his spear with his thoughts like he has the fucking force or something. But he, he can't turn off the auto tracking on his laser, making his fucking gun absolutely useless unless his helmet is on his head and he gets knocked off his head a couple times in his most crucial battles. Ooh, that's nice. Really makes me miss the plasma caster and, um, it, and also the plasma caster not only is it synonymous with the predator and one thing that also, but I really hate that this predator doesn't have a shoulder pad. Every single one has it. The only one that didn't, like the fucking super steroid predator from the predator which is the fucking worst predator movie of all time god do not watch that one for the love of god do not do it if you haven't seen it this one just not only does it not act the part he doesn't look the part and that's kind of a problem i'm not the jedi i should be i feel like in this film they have intentionally made this predator one of the dumbest predators that we've ever seen just so that way naru could defeat it in single combat as much as i love this film at the end it's too much of a girl boss thing like yes she's capable yes she's smart yes she has some skills in combat but someone like naru could not take out a predator 
got stunned in days by a punch by a hundred pound tribesman. You're about to fight a creature that one hit a grizzly bear, a grizzly bear that you attempted to hunt and nearly fucking killed you. Like that's another thing that boggles my mind. She fought a fucking predator one on one without a scratch on her. And to anyone who says, oh, at the end of the movie, she has a busted lip. The tribesman gave her that busted lip when he punched her in the fucking face. How about that? You know what have made this end fight a million times better? The addition of her brother, Tabe. Like, why didn't Tabe and her just survive? Like, imagine if instead of coming in on his horse to battle him there, what if he just came on his horse, smacked the helmet off, grabbed his sister and got out of there, and the two of them came up with a plan to trap and kill this thing, and they were working on it together, then Tabe loses his life during the fucking battle, but she survives. She gets the killing blow. It would have been so much better if he made it to the final fight that way a lot of things would have made more sense first of all the ability of killing the predator with stick and stone technology having more than one person a more experienced and a better hunter with you would have explained how she was able to create that tree trap in time i'm sorry cutting up all those sticks and wrapping them around a tree bro what the predator do take a fucking nap if the character of tabe was saved until the very end it would have been a lot better for the movie the sacrifice was great i love it but it should have been saved for for the very end and it should have been a group effort say what you want about them like i personally love the film predators i hate the film the predator but the one thing that i like about both of these films that they have in common is the way that the predator is taken down in the final fight scene it is a bunch of circumstances where it be the environment booby traps and cooperation to take out these predators and that's the type of shit i like whether it be in predators the combination of freeing the trapped predator and saying it on the uh a berserker predator and then having the booby trap with the grenades royce was like setting the whole place on fire doing a bunch of gorilla hit and run tactics then mia woke up and fucking sniped it in the back and then roy beat it the fuck down with an axe and beheaded it it was a fucking great way to take out a predator it wasn't my favorite but at least in the predator it's somewhat similar the dog that they made retarded with the nail gun that thing came in and kind of helped them there was also the part when the predator was leaning on the ship and the sun cut its arm off there was like a grenade or whatever like blew like its limbs off so yeah like there was a bunch of cooperation in that film to take it out but that film was a complete piece of garbage and i know what's funny about those movies the predator and predators both the main characters um royce from predators and whoever the hell that other guy was both of these guys were highly trained highly experienced and they got beat up in their final fights they took more damage and they didn't take the predator out by themselves they need to do it with a group effort but what someone who couldn't even fucking hunt a deer in the beginning of the movie takes out a predator alone i don't think so this is the stupidest predator we've ever seen in our lives. So that's Prey, and those are my thoughts on the good, the bad, and the motherfucking ugly that came along with this film. So, if I were to give this film a rating out of five, I'm gonna have to give Prey a three and a half out of five. Feeling good's good enough. From the lackluster hunt that the predator went on, lack of uh, representation of the characteristics of a predator, the very final fight scene was complete bullshit. With reasonings like that, despite certain performances being very good and the predator looking good, having some good kills and some and entertaining action sequences, there's just too much mistake to, in good conscience, give this anything higher than a three and a half out of five. Great film terrible predator you're on the verge of greatness we were this close i would love to have given this film a higher score it had all the potential of being an amazing fantastic film all the pieces were there they just weren't moved in the right direction in my opinion my uh, full that being said and done my name is Duddis. This is Piff Rangers. I want to thank you all for joining me on another episode. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the link tree down below to follow me on my social medias and further support the channel and all that good shit. Y'all be good and be good to each other. I walk on, keep a loaded firearm, living through the quiet storm. All I know is staying strong, you won't forget me when I'm gone.